What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today, in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out V Rising. And honestly, I don't even know if this counts as an indie game. It is self published, and so, like, technically, but this is made by the same company that made Battle Right. I have no experience with that game. I never played it. I have no idea what was going on with it. But anyways, in V Rising, you are an awakened vampire, and the game is very much like Conan Exiles, or something like Rust, or maybe something like Valheim. And the game is presented from an isometric perspective, so it's got little bits of, like, action RPG and magic influences in there as well, which is interesting. So we're going to dive on in today. We're going to take a look at the title. I'm going to give you my thoughts as we play. I did a little bit of a tester previously, and so, like, I've got a decent idea what I'm going to talk about while we're playing the game. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. If after watching this game, you did want to get access to the early access, there's a link for you down below in the description. The game is on sale right now for $20 on Steam, so you can purchase it at that price. Uh, the game does have various cosmetic DLCs on day one. You guys know my feelings about that. I kind of feel like in the case of any sort of day one cosmetic DLC, it's better just to fold that into the game as kind of like a bonus for supporting and like buying the game in the first month or the first 30 days or whatever else. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I'm not going to harp on too much about it. I'm not a fan of it, but people can make up their own minds. Let's go ahead and play the game. We are going to play a private game today. I'm going to be hitting this from a little bit different of a perspective. My guess is that a lot of people that are going to be playing this game are going to be playing from the perspective of like multiplayer because this is definitely a game where you can have like 40 people on a server and I prefer to play things by myself. I'm more of a solo gamer kind of guy. I, I used to be like hyper competitive and like really really into like PvP games and stuff like that but I felt like it brought out a negative side of me that I'd rather not indulge like a lesser devil that lived deep down inside my veins. And so anyways we're going to do a solo server here today. I'm going to name this uh, Butt World. There we go. That's a fantastic name. Uh, the game does have a lot of server setup options for when you're customizing your own private server, basically, that you're going to be playing on by yourself. As a warning, though, the game does require an internet connection, which is just the most curious thing. Because, like, I feel like, so, the interesting thing about this is that you have to have an, you have to have an internet connection because, as far as I understand it, I fiddled with it for a little bit, and I'm open to being corrected here. But the way that I saw it is that basically the game makes a private server that you then log into to play on effectively. Uh, which is kind of a weird way to get it done because then as far as what people are saying on the forums anyways, I'm not really super educated about this stuff. Uh, you need to have an internet connection in order to kind of play solo. And so obviously I, I would much rather you be able to play the game just off of like a storage medium in a solo capacity. But it is an odd thing that I noticed while I was tootling around with the game earlier. But back to the subject at hand, there are a lot of options here that you can use to set up your own experience. Which is a good idea because in a lot of cases game like games like this are not set up for like a solo experience. You're supposed to have like a bunch of players in order to complete like the end game challenges and stuff like that. And so things like this being readily available are really good for you to adjust like the loot drop rates and your damage multipliers and stuff like that so that you can actually solo your way through the game. And so actually I like that a lot. I'm not a big fan of like the, the setting up a solo server thing, but I am a fan of all the customization options that they gave you. So let's go ahead and start a new game here. All right, so the first thing we got to do is do some character customization. It does seem like there's a reasonable amount of options here for, like, faces and hairstyles and things of that nature. Uh, this is the lady character right here, the dude character. He's got, like, a weird bowling pin thing going on that I'm not quite so sure who thought that was a good idea, but I, I feel like our vampire doesn't fear silver. He does not fear the daylight. He does not fear garlic. Uh, he's probably terrified of large, rolling, just bowling balls coming right at him. Because he's definitely got that sort of body shape, man. He's all lats. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and we'll customize this guy out real fast. Uh, there are a lot of different skin tones, a lot of different hair colors from like natural to goofy. Uh, you can pick whatever you like. After all, you are an eldritch vampire. There's a number of different faces you can play around with. Uh, this guy right here looks like he chewed on a weed whacker. He's definitely seen like, he seems like he's had better vampire days. Uh, but let me fiddle with this stuff for a second. I'm going to see if I can come up with a vampire that's somewhat socially presentable. All right, so here we are. I leaned into my inner green skin so that we can unleash some DACA on the land of the living with our necromantic powers. 
I feel like I look pretty good. I feel like I look like I'm somewhat, I mean, I guess my face is still kind of messed up because I went for like one of the zombie faces. There we go. That one looks vaguely judgmental. Like you dare to bring me normal milk instead of chocolate milk? I banish thee. Uh, let's go ahead and start the game on off. So here we are inside of our coffin. Let us arise. Yeah, dude, that's how I want to enter a room from now on. I want, like, a giant necromancy circle to appear every time I walk through a door. Uh, so we can run around the game controls with W, A, S, and D. And then the game's got kind of an interesting caveat to its control system. You right-click in order to rotate the camera, like so. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but ultimately I got used to it pretty quickly. Uh, we can press the shift key and we'll vault off of locations. Everything's wonderfully well animated. We left click to attack. The environments are destructible, so you can break all these lanterns and things right here if you really want to. Although there's not really a loot incentive to do so. Uh, there is no sprint key inside the game. I do very much wish that there was, because given the open world nature of the game, travel can take a little while, but as I understand it and from what I've seen of later on gameplay, it does look like you unlock mounts and like undead destroyers and things like that as you get further on into the game but there is a skeleton coming on up the road right here so let's go ahead and smite him we can press the space bar uh, it's going to allow us to dodge away and if we attack out of the space bar i think we get some kind of like health bonus he dropped some bones you probably want to hold on to just about everything in this game uh, just due to the fact that it's a crafting survival game so there's probably like a lot of things to get done here that guy's got like a cross but ow dude Okay, so as a as a undead monster that has just a real dislike of pointy objects being pointed anywhere near my cardiac region, if you could just relax with that right there, I'd appreciate it, man. Like, I have a disability. It's called pointy stickitis, and I would really appreciate if you would respect that. Uh, so I've got a couple of stones here. I've got some wood. Nothing really too crazy. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. We've also got some bones on the ground right there. Apparently, I've completed some task right here. And so we can make a bone sword as of right now. I'm going to go ahead and fall back real quick because we've got a few more enemies coming after us. I would actually like it very much. So you can only tilt the camera about that far. I would like to be able to tilt the camera a little bit lower, but I'm guessing they've got it locked and you can't really do that. Uh, just to stop the camera from clipping through some of the environmental objects and stuff, which are probably at like a pre-designated height would be my guess. A couple more enemies down and a few more bones. Let's go ahead and jump on into our inventory and we'll craft ourselves a sword. That's going to increase our damage by a little bit. Weapons in this game are kind of interesting in that there's like four or five types of weapons. And they all have the exact same attack power and they kind of have like similar DPSs. The difference is different items are used for different types of crafting. So when it comes to gathering like bushes and twigs and plants and things of that nature, the sword does the best. When it comes to gathering stone, the hammer does the best right there. Uh, if you're trying to gather trees, the axe does the best. And so you will want to carry around a full set of everything, just like you would in any other survival game. The only difference is, I guess the game gives you the freedom to kind of equip whatever weapon you want, regardless of whether or not you're crafting uh, for the task that you currently have at hand. I'm going to go ahead and do some of these basic tutorial tasks right here, and I'm just going to skip and edit it on out. And then we'll come back in once I get to kind of like the woodland zone. I will show you the size of the world map because it is quite grandiose and large. It's a pretty beefy world map. Uh, but up until then, I'll see you once I've got all these basic tasks taken care of. All right, so here we find ourselves at the end of the graveyard, ready to leave and go out into the greater wide world where numerous threats will attempt to vanquish us. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the aspects of the combat that I actually do like uh, once we get out there. But for right now, we need to craft ourselves some gear. And so we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. And unfortunately, I can't finish off the boots and the gloves until ultimately I have myself some animal hides. Once I have animal hides, we can lock those together. But as you can see, the gear does get added to your character right here. Uh, it does look like we've wrapped ourselves sort of in a burlap sack and then just made ourselves sort of a fancy... A fancy uh, aristocratic bra out of the disembodied finger bones of humanity. Not the decision that I would make before I wander into town. I don't know. I just don't feel like wrapping grandma's hands around your chesticles is a good idea before you introduce yourself to the locals. But hey, maybe that's me. Maybe my social rules are a little bit different 
from the social rules that are existent inside of vampire society. Uh, this is the world map as we know it right now in the early access. Chances are these areas are going to get larger and they're going to add more things as time goes along. I haven't really had time to take a look at everything. I've explored kind of like this area that I'm outlining with the mouse right now, but I haven't gone too much further out than that. But the general rule that I found is that like the farther north you are, the more difficult it's going to get and the higher your item rating you're going to want to have before you're going to feel safe. I'm going to go into the West Farbane Woods, and we'll see if we can get ourselves settled before daybreak arrives, because that's when things are going to get a little bit dangerous. Uh, we'll jump off the cliff right there. We do have some bone skeletons over on that side. Not really particularly interested in beefing with them for right now. I want to get into the forest, and I want to start fighting with some wolves, and I want to start feeding because our blood meter is pretty low right now. And, like, I'd prefer for that to be a little bit higher. There's a wolf right there. We'll go ahead and tune this guy up. Now, what you may notice is when I mouse over this wolf, you'll see that it says creature 9% right there. Uh, that 9% is basically the purity of their blood. Now, when I first started playing, what I thought to myself is, okay, so that means I've got to drain a whole bunch of wolves. And in draining a whole bunch of wolves, it'll be additive. So if, like, one wolf has 8% and one wolf has 10%, then we'll end up with 18%, and it'll slowly accumulate. But in fact, that's not how it works. You're actually searching for perfect mobs that have perfect bloodlines that you can take in, because if you do that, the higher the blood quality you have, the more bonuses you get for using that blood to fuel your vampire for right now. And so in the case of wolf blood right here, if we found really high quality wolf blood, we would be unlocking all of these buffs right here, and the buffs would be modified to be stronger the better their blood is. And that's kind of an interesting mechanic that I'd like to investigate a little bit further. In fact, I feel like there's a pretty strong chance I'm going to end up streaming this game on the day that it... Ooh, he's got 24% right there. Let's go ahead and feed off of him real quick. There we go. Get on in there. And then let's see how our bonuses change. So with the 24% wolf blood, what you'll also notice is the blood that fills up this little vial, like this little vial right here, uh, it gets thicker. And it gets less translucent, which is actually a really, really nice detail. Uh, so it looks like it made our movement speed, like, 2% better. We really, like, you start to see, it's kind of, like, exponential. You're going to start to see the really, really good bonuses when you get to the really high levels of purity, basically. Uh, do I have access to all the other crafting stuff? I don't. Well, let's go ahead and make the gloves and the boots so that we can unlock axes and things of that nature. And then we'll talk about, like, I really like, actually, I feel like the combat feels pretty decent in this game. Like, it's got nice hit feedback. The one thing I don't like is every third swing that your vampire does, he goes, wah. And I don't know, like, after playing the game for, like, an hour, I found that the wah after, like, every third swing got really, really annoying, and that's saying something, because I'm from the East Bay area, where saying wah is like a fundamental part of like the music scene here. And so to, be to wear me out on it, that's fairly impressive. Uh, so it wants me to make an axe, and it wants me to make a mace, and basically gather some materials. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera, and then we'll come back once I've got them all made. But for right now, it's added the bone axe to my inventory. All right, so after a little bit of menial gathering here, I've got my mace and I've got my axes and I'm all ready to go. Don't you guys remember like in the new popular Castlevania anime? Did you guys ever, did you guys remember that scene from the first season? A crude mist stone. I think I just picked up, I'm, if it's a stone and it came out of a mountain and it's misting, I'm pretty sure I just looted Mountain Dookie. But any, that's completely different from Mountain Dew, by the way. Those are two different products entirely. But as I was saying, do you guys remember during the Castlevania anime, that entire sort of montage where Dracula spent like two or three episodes kicking rocks and chopping down trees before he became the, you know, empirical badass that he is? Me too. I remember that scene. That's definitely a thing that vampires do before they get powerful, is they spend a whole bunch of time chopping down trees and kicking rocks. Okay, so we finally got to the base building portion of the game. I've done all the little gathering tasks that they wanted me to do. I'm going to set up my base like right up over here in this gap on the mini-map. Oh, am I in combat right now? Oh, yeah, there's a wolf, dude. There's a wolf over here, and he's trying to take me out. He wants my blood. Uh, I think I have slain the wolf. I do feel like the combat definitely has a nice sense of impact, and it feels pretty good. Like, one of the big things that always jars me out of action in games is when there's, like, not a seamless dash animation. And the dash animation actually feels pretty good in this game. Uh, it looks like there's the remnants of a castle right here. The sun is about to come up, and that worries me a little bit. I need to... Oh, what is that thing, dude? 
A stone golem? He's got a skull rating? Oh, I don't like that. Dude, he's like hanging, he's hanging treant brain right now. This is a family show, sir. I can't put that on the internet. You're, you're about to get me taken off the air, man. I'm about to get deleted. There's a bear over here. What does the bear do? Is he hard? I'm gonna fight the bear. Let's fight the bear. Oh, the bear has a skull. Oh, he's getting up. He's waking up. All right, the sun is rising. So there's a thing you have to do once the sun gets here. It's that we can only stand inside of shadows, in case you were wondering. I'm going to go ahead and dodge out of the way of him real fast. Otherwise, we sizzle a little bit. I do like that they left a little bit of character motion. So, like, while you're swinging and while you're casting spells, you can move a little bit. Like, shift your character, basically. And I like that a lot. We've defeated the bear. Oh, what was the quality of his blood? I probably should have absorbed his bear blood, dude. Well, I guess now we'll never know. Rip. Okay, so you press the C key to get into the building menu. That's pretty much the beginning portion. I'm sorry, the B key. And then we've got to put down a castle heart before we can do anything else. So we'll put down a castle heart kind of, I guess, right there just to give us a little bit of space to build. I do very much like that building animation right there. It looks pretty good. And then we need to claim some ground. Now we claim ground by getting blood modules basically out of things that we've slain. Stuff like deer, rabbits, bears things of that nature so we are going to have to go on a little bit of a hunt here before we can go too much further but what i can say about the building process oh, I'm, I'm cooking i'm cooking i can't chase that deer down we might actually have to hang tight and wait until morning unfortunately i definitely don't want to beef with the stone golem he seems like he's just going to be downright just nasty to deal with he's quite large he's got a stature that I think belies a certain level of just pain he can inflict upon me. And so I'd rather not deal with it. Oh, I missed with my blood bolt. Now I feel like an idiot. Okay. Well, I'm going to wait for my blood bolt to recharge. And, oh, I didn't kill the deer. There we go. We got him. And we got a little bit of blood essence right there. But I got to get back to the shadows. Okay. All right, when your skin starts to sizzle and boil, that means that you're doing a bad job of being a vampire. I'm a little bit terrified to chop down trees right now, but I'm just going to farm up some resources for tonight and maybe hunt some animals so that I can get some more blood essence. Or maybe if I can find some people around, that'd be even better. But I'll catch you back maybe once night falls. The days tend to be pretty short in this game. They're not that long because obviously vampires function at night. Uh, but I'm just going to gather some stuff up and then we'll get going. I figured I'd stop on in. Like, I was just kind of wandering around farming blood essence, and there's a bandit camp over here, so I bet we can deal with that pretty easily, actually. We're going to see what we can get out of this bandit camp. It may be deadly. We may get ourselves into trouble. Uh, we can't absorb human blood. Human blood also has kind of, like, ratings, basically. Ooh, this guy's got 81%, dude. We need that. 81%'s no joke. I'm going to jump over to here. There we go. I want the 81% guy. Oh, we're getting beat up pretty good right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, I need to I need to get out of the line of fire real quick. And then also, I need to not burn to death. That's going to be the second half of this. I do have abilities I can use to get myself out of this situation. We pretty much just don't want to get hit by this guy, though. That's kind of what we're working towards. So I'll fire a little bit of energy at him. We don't want to absorb this guy because he's got crappy quality blood. But we do want to finish off the rest of these guys, if for only getting ourselves access to a bit more blood essence all right so what i need to do now is if you hold down left control we've got a number of abilities we can play around with you guys have no doubt seen me throwing my shadow bolt and you've seen me well i haven't really done blood right but that's a counter you set it up and if anybody hits you it does an aoe and then it heals you uh, but we can use blood mend as well which uses up some of our blood meter in order to heal us so there you go. As you can see, our health is kind of coming back right now. And we can just sit here and channel that until we're pretty much completely healthy, as far as I know. The only downside is that it's using up my blood meter, which means eventually it will necessitate me having to feed off of another person who may or may not have the same quality of blood as the last guy. As you can see with the 81% blood quality, we've got Tier 3 upgrades, so our attack power is up by an undeclared amount, somewhere in between 10 and 20%. And then we've also got reduced cooldowns on our weapon skills, and then we've also got reduced damage taken. So there you go. Like, that's the reason why you want to absorb people and sort of take their blood. I'm going to head back to my base real fast because I feel like we're about ready to expand out and make the place a little bit bigger and stronger. And then I can show you the modularity of the building system, and you can get a feel for whether or not that's something that you're, like, feeling, or if you're like, meh, about it. Uh, so let's head back over there. 
What you may notice is that if I mouse over this, it says my castle heart is in decay. Uh, basically, that's a rust mechanic where basically it, it's for multiplayer. You can disable it, though, in your server options for solo so that it's not that big of a deal. But basically what it is is bases, they naturally degrade so that the entire map doesn't turn into just a giant nasty forest of old bases uh, that people have abandoned that are no longer playing the game. You've got to stock up, especially in the case of our castle heart, you've got to stock it up with blood essence in order to keep it from decaying. Otherwise, you'll be spraying blood fire everywhere while you're building. But I kind of like the blood fire look. I'll be honest with you. I feel like blood fire, it denotes that either you are really, really good at carpentry or really, really bad at carpentry. And I can't really make up my mind. Uh, we'll just make like a little 4x4 area. I'm using my blood essence right now to claim these territories. So these are now mine. I can build inside of them. I think we're still missing. Oh, no, dude. Did I run out of blood essence again? Oh. Well, the good news is that I did not run out of blood essence. The bad news is that I ran out of rocks. And so I've got to do the old vampiric necromancy geology thing. Oh, apparently I can't harvest that one. My attack level is much, much too low. Feels ripper Rooney's. Feels real, real bad. Not going to lie. Did that guy just spontaneously disappear? All right. Goodbye. I'll see you later. That's one of those. Uh, oh, there he is right there. Huh. Must just be like a pop-in issue or something. How strange. All right, well, let's head back over here, and I need to claim the remainder of this territory for myself. Because I'm greedy. I'm real, real greedy. Uh, we need to interact with the heart. I don't really have that many essences left, but I'm going to drag and drop what I have in there. 32 minutes should be enough for the rest of the episode. And let's maybe think about the fact that we wanted to put up some walls. I've got to claim that real quick before it's going to give me access to walls, but there we go. Now we have walls, and I should have enough lumber to, like, wall this entire thing off. So let's go ahead and do it. I found that the snapping is pretty good on most of the doodads that you are able to place while constructing your base. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. One thing that we are going to need to do, though, is that I'm going to have to chop down all these trees and things that are in the way. So give me a second, and I'll do that. Okay, so I think I've got the land mostly cleared out for right now. So I don't know if I can build a wall down to that corner. I don't know if it's going to let me. I suppose we'll find out. It did indeed let me build a wall down to that corner, so that's good. I actually need to figure out where I'm going to place a door as well. But the modularity of the building system seems to work pretty decently well. I don't really have any problems with it. At the bottom here, you've got a menu, so you can get, like, different things. You can get, like, pillars, or you can get, like, doors, or whatever else makes you happy. I do like the little environmental effects, like there's old castle hearts laying around that are completely and totally destroyed from maybe previous vampires that had tried to make their go in this area, even when you're playing, like, single player. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but it looks like it wants me to place a coffin and a stash. Yeah, I can do that. I'll probably put my coffin like, yeah, dude, let's uh, let's maybe put the coffin in like right over here. Seems like a good enough spot for it. I don't hate it. And then we can put down like a belongings chest right there as well. Uh, the other thing that we're definitely going to want to build is you want to build a mist brazier. Uh, you need to build this. Like, this is actually, like, a big deal. What this does is it creates a fog that obscures your base from the sun so that during the daytime you can still wander around your base and you can still do, like, activities without ending up dead. It runs off of bones, so that's one thing to keep in mind. However, one bone, I think, lasts for, like, 60 seconds. And so, like, we've got, like, 90 minutes worth of bones right there. And you can toggle it in order to make sure that you're not using up your resources. On top of that... We haven't really talked about the inventory right here. Uh, you have different resistances. You have your movement speed and how it's been modified by the blood you've taken in. You've got your spell power that makes you hit harder with stuff like our shadow bolt. And then you've got your physical power, which makes you hit harder with your weapons. Uh, so that's brought us up to basic crafting and refinement. So this is the point at the game where we're going to need to turn things into planks. And we're going to need to turn things into bricks so that we can get better equipment. I'm going to chop down these trees real quick with the power of my wah. There you go. Just wah until the tree falls over. There you go, dude. Perfect. Get out of here, tree. Uh, when the trees fall, they do have physics. They don't seem to, like, impact with your base or anything or, like, destroy the walls or anything else like that. That is a fact that I'm actually kind of thankful for. Uh, let's go ahead and we will drop in our sawmill around here somewhere. So we've got our sawmill for refinement. There you go. Nobody knew that being a vampire was a union job. That's right. 
Local 137th Vampire Carpenters. You had no clue, and now you know. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop that in, and I need to put some wood in here. That way we can convert it on over into planks so that we can make better equipment. And then while we wait for that to get done, I need to make a simple workbench. So I'm going to go farm some materials very rapidly, and then I'll come back once we're ready to start cooking. So daybreak has arrived, but it doesn't really matter because, as you can see, my little mist generator is covering us with shadow for right now so that we can operate during the daytime. However, if you wanted to go and sleep, you can absolutely do that. You can jump on into your coffin. There you go. And once you're in your coffin, you can just press the space bar to pop back out and you get another cool animation where you levitate out of your bed. I wish I could do that every morning. That just exudes authority, you know what I mean? Like when you just levitate out of bed like that in a lackadaisical way... It's pretty gangster. Now, we've got some new materials, so chances are there's probably some new gear that we can craft. And so, oh, it wants me to make a workbench first. Yeah, I can make a twerk bench. Let's do it. There's our simple workbench right there. We've got exactly enough parts to make this work. So we'll just plop it in right there. And it looks like it's got like a tiny little anvil and crucible and some other stuff in there that we can play around with. And it's given us access to reinforced gear. The downside to that is that we are going to need a lot of stone to make this work. And so I think I'll probably go out and get that stone. That way we can kind of jump into some new gear. We do have the animal hides for upgrading our clothing, actually. So we could do that. Yeah, let's upgrade all of our clothing right there. Oh, we also have the Night Stalker vest down here. And a Bone Castle Key. By accessing level 1 Castle Heart, you can spend one Bone Castle Key to destroy the castle or spend three Bone Castle Keys to steal the castle. Okay, so that's for, like, PvP stuff right there. Uh, but there's our gear upgrade, I think. Oh, it's inside the receptacle. Okay, so we'll just kind of click this stuff on over then. And how do we look here? Like, how am I, how am I, what's my appearance doing? So taking a look at my appearance, it looks like we've added even more Grandma Finger to the outfit. Uh, the ensemble has really come together with kind of a blue daba dee daba die type thing. I don't know where we picked up all of these dies, but hey, we're a little bit better protected and our gear level has gone up considerably. So now really I just need to go and grab stone and then we need to get ourselves rocking. But that's really kind of the core rotation of the game. Uh, it's one of those games. Like if you've ever played Mist, I'm sorry, Mist, that's completely and totally the wrong game. Uh, if you've ever played something like, let's call it, so I need to split these. There we go. I'm going to split that right there. If you've ever played something like Rust or you've ever played something like Valheim, you will completely and totally understand uh, how the games can be kind of grindy. Like there's going to be a lot of resource gathering. And so if you're going to be playing solo, just like I did with like Conan Exiles, I highly recommend uh, you take the time. I'm in combat right now. Why am I in combat? What's trying to murder me? I guess I'm not in combat. I thought I was for a second, but I guess that I'm not. I'm going to go out and get some stone. But if you've ever played those other games, chances are you'll understand completely like there's going to be some, oh, there's wolves attacking. Uh, there's definitely going to be some resource farming involved in the process. To some people, that's the appeal. And to other people, they simply cannot stand it. And honestly, that's where it comes down to different strokes for different folks. Uh, I've never really particularly minded uh, grinding out resources and stuff like that. And the game does provide you with server controls so that just like with Conan Exiles, uh, you can adjust the resource drops by like 2x, which I think is what I did when I was playing solo. And that made it feel like much less sheer of a cliff. But let me get this stone together so we can upgrade our gear. I've slaughtered a couple more wolves. I don't really feel good about myself right now having killed another batch of good boys. But that leaves us where we are. So, you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, my blood quality is starting to get a little bit low. Like, I don't really have a whole lot of mana left for my spells or my attacks. So I think we are going to have to absorb kind of an inferior creature out here. I'd rather not. That one's got 1% blood. Oof. Okay. That one's got 5%, but I got to fill this meter up, man. I got no choice. So we're going to lose our bonuses right there. That's kind of a bummer. I would rather not. But that does give me some more mana to play around with when it comes to casting Shadow Bolts and generally being a nuisance to the enemy. Uh, there is a spear that we can craft. The spear is really good for hunting critters. It does like a bunch of extra damage on them. So basically the sword is for weed whacking. The axes are for trees. The hammer is for stones. And then, of course, you've got the spear for hunting animals. But I actually got to get back to base. Mm, there's zombies and stuff over here right next to our base. How dare you impugn this place with your shabby rendition of being undead, sir. 
Don't you understand? I'm king of the night now. That's like, I am here. This is my place of business. And you guys can get out of the way or you can get bowled over. Frankly, I don't really have any opinion about it. You guys are lesser undead to me. Frankly, you should be serving me. You should bring me. You should be bringing me platters. You know that have all of my favorite types of blood. Uh, a, A B, A B positive, O. You know, a, a nice selection, really. Some, you know, you, sometimes you gotta mix it up. You know what I mean? Life is all about variety. Is the spice of life. It's all about not doing the same thing. You always gotta try something new. Dude, I think the stone golem's been busy while we were away. Like, there's a whole bunch of dead bodies over here with, like, a bunch of loot. He's just been stomping out everything that comes around. So I think we can reasonably ascertain that he's probably not super happy about having visitors. That would be my guess anyways, is that he may not be the biggest fan of house guests. So we probably want to get ourselves together and get some better gear. All right, so we've got 13 planks. What can I do with 13 plonks? Uh, it looks like we can upgrade our bone sword. It looks like we can upgrade three of our things. And luckily, I have all the stuff for the three of our things. Realistically, I would like to have the spear as well. I should probably craft one of those and put it, like, into my four slot. But for right now, I'm going to hang tight with what I have. Now, this is a tier advancement. What this means is that we are now capable of taking down nodes of the next tier up. And that's really the core rotation of how these games always function. You start off with the baseline nodes, and then what is that right there? It gives me my health back? Cool. Uh, you start off with the basic nodes, and then you work your way up to the copper nodes, and so on and so forth. I would like to take a run at this stone golem and just see how tough he is. Like, maybe we'll give that a try. Let's see how bad this dude is. Oh, the, qu the answer to the question is pretty bad, dude. That's a lot of HP. Oh, he seems to be mostly immune to anything I can do to him. I think we made... Okay, I take it back. I take it back. I'm sorry. It was just a social experiment. It was just a prank. I didn't mean to. I think the stone golem is no longer a problem. I think I outran him. So, I'm going to go back over and wipe out this camp with my newfound gear. That's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and shred these guys. Maybe somebody's got some good blood over here that I can absorb. Unfortunately, it does not appear to be the case. If nothing else, we are absorbing their essence right now, which is going to allow us to build our base up bigger and better and better. We'll throw that out there just to get some... Oh, it disintegrated him. Oh, he didn't disintegrate. Never mind. I was wrong. He was doing like a backstab attack thing. I thought I disintegrated him with my shadow bolt. I was very, very, very wrong. Uh, he slipped into the shadows like a straight ninja and tried to backstab me and perma-stun me, which is actually kind of filthy, if I'm honest. All right, let's go ahead and knock him out. There's some paper right there, some coarse thread. Uh, I thought I saw a chest around here somewhere. Didn't I see a chest? Did I break it? Oh, no, dude. I broke the chest. I wonder if I got any loot out of it, and I just picked it up. There's one over here. Let's see what happens with this chest. I think I accidentally broke that last one. Uh, that one's got paper, plant fibers, and cloth inside of it. Probably not important for right now, but maybe important later on. There's actually some refined leather right there as well, which I think is for the next armor set. And then it looks like we've got some plant fibers. This right here is a, what is this? Assortment of simple candle stands. Uh, this is a research book. So as you run around the game and as you clear out enemy camps that are full of mobs, you're going to find research books. And those research books will teach you how to craft various things. Uh, but we have to have a research table first before that's going to be any type of useful to us. And so let's head on out to the next... What is this over here? Is there something inside of there? Oh, there's a lady. Oh, apparently I'm just smacking up a lady right now. I don't feel good about this. Oh, well. She ain't nothing but dinner to me. But I do like to be humane to my dinner, you know what I mean? She's got a worker soul. So apparently she makes me harvest and gather better. That's pretty cool. I, I do really, really like the blood system, in fact. Like, I dig it. Like, I really like that idea right there where you're constantly circulating in between different blood types from various enemies that give you different bonuses that make you better or worse at certain activities. I think that's actually like a really compelling idea. Oh, I didn't even need to craft a bone spear because one just dropped. And while we're on the subject, can I talk about the fact how much I like that your gear does not have durability in this game, dude? I cannot stand gear dur durability. It drives me crazy. Let's try out this spear. Is it working well? It's doing all right. It definitely doesn't seem like it's comfortable when I poke people with it. They don't seem like they like it very much. What's going on over here? Oh, we've got, like, some upgraded zombies. They've got, like, armor and stuff on. 
I wonder if they drop better loot. I don't know. Let's go ahead and give them a look real fast. Looks like they mostly drop bones. I'm not too upset about it, though, because we need that to power our little mist generators. And so, like, that's fine by me. Is that a wizard? Oh, these guys are level 27. I don't know if we're that badass. Uh, we may have made a bad decision right here. There's no XP and no leveling up. Like, your level is entirely dictated by what gear you're wearing. But I think there's a reasonable chance that these guys might be better at this than I am. Yeah, that bolt of light just dealt, like, all my health and damage. Realistically, I need to get to this guy right here. I would prefer not to take any more damage, but sometimes that's just not the way life goes. Oh, boy. Oh, we are struggle bussing now. Yeah, we may have to disengage. Oh, wow, there's a lot of enemies over here. Well, they didn't really drop anything other than bones anyway, so I just wanted to see what that yellow camp was. I'll probably just kind of hide off in the bushes over here and channel myself a heal. Let's go see what this little camp is and just kind of have a look at it. I'd like to see some of the diversity that's available inside of the map. And, I, like, it's tough. Like, I never know how much to comment on things because, like, I'm one of those people that I like to let the game speak for itself and just kind of, like, remain neutral and just be kind of like your presenter here, almost like eSports style. But at a certain point, like, I feel like I always have to, like, talk about certain things that jump out at me. We'll go ahead and heal real quick. There we go. Let me get that health back. Let me get that good stuff back. I'm trying to feel better right now. Does it actually tell you, like, on the map what level these camps are? Oh, it tells you what resources drop, so that's actually pretty useful if you're looking for specific things. I don't know what the respawn rate's going to be like, but that is helpful information. Uh, so anyways, I feel like, oh, there was a little chug right there. Yeah, lag in a single-player experience. you got to love that. That's always a good decision. Uh, the bear's blood, this bear has very, very, he has unbearable blood. It's awful. Uh, we don't even want it, so I'm just going to kill him real fast. He did drop a heart and some bones, so that's good. Let's take a look around here, though, and maybe we can find some copper or something useful. Oh, I guess it's just like a little bear cave. I guess that's it. It doesn't really appear like there's anything else around here. But we are kind of getting towards the end portion of this video, so I would like to give you my thoughts on the game. Uh, so let me let me see what I can kind of pull together here. So V Rising, I think, is sort of a mixed bag for me right now, but I think I'm tentatively on the positive side if we omit a few things. And these are, like, reasonably large things for me. Uh, first and foremost, I dislike day one cosmetics being up for sale. The existence of that stuff means, once again, that it was made well in advance of release, and it could have just as easily been included as extra content for free for the players who decided to support the early access. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like the fact that, like, you want me to spend more money after you already asked someone to pay 20 bucks for the game. It is what it is. It's just a thing that I personally dislike. Uh, dealing with lag in a single-player experience is never fun either, and I prefer that they make it so that you're not hosting a personal server. Instead, you're just running the game off your rig with no internet involved. Uh, the, per the Because the personal server does seem to hitch from time to time. Lag in single-player is not fun, especially in heated moments. Uh, those two things out of the way, like the game mechanically proper, I think the graphical stylings are good. I think it actually looks really good. The game ran smoothly for me, but from some brief browsing on the Steam forums, it kind of seems like other people are having a rough go of it and having a bad case of the chuggy boys and so it's not a statistically irrelevant number of people posting about it either so maybe do some research on your specific hardware before you jump in i didn't really have any problems but other people are saying that they are having problems i only had one real bug during the couple hours i spent with the game and it was actually that edit that you saw at the beginning of the video where i was coming down the stairs and then it teleported me back for a second that was an edit right there i had to run back because my ui elements got locked up and were like stuck on screen for a second in a weird way and then after i hit the escape key for like four or five times they just went away and popped back, and it was all fine. So, I don't know. That's the one bug I've seen in the couple hours that I've been playing. The combat does feel meaty, and it does feel chunky. The sound effects and the soundtrack feel good and make everything feel nice. Everything from the dodge sounds to the swing sounds to the impact sounds are all great. I don't think they need to change anything up right there. Aside from the annoying, ah, like every third swing that you take. Like, it just plays that same sound effect over and over and over again. And during, like, long harvesting sessions, it can be kind of annoying. 
Uh, the dodge works well, and it smoothed the light off. I didn't notice any graphical issues or tearing, and generally I think the game looks great. They made some good lighting decisions, and I like the saturated color style that they went for instead of washing it out. Uh, I really like the blood mechanic, which proffers various bonuses for absorbing different things and, like, different people's blood. And, in fact, later on in the game, you get an altar that lets you hunt and target specific mobs and guides you to them, along with a full loot list of what they can potentially drop, which I think is a really cool idea. I enjoyed most of the magic spells. They felt pretty smooth to light off in the midst of a tough fight. Um, and mechanically, I think they're mostly in a decent spot. The game doesn't really set out to reinvent the wheel. If you hate games like Rust or Conan Exiles, you're going to hate this game too because it very much sticks to that playbook. But if you like those sorts of games, it seems to be reasonably well made. And I'll be keeping an eye on the early access as it develops. Uh, it seems like it runs okay on my personal rig and everything seems to be sort of in a decent spot. I can't speak for how everybody else is going to perform there, but for my opinion. Uh, the options menu does allow full keybinds, so that's a check in a box for me. And then the graphics options are actually really in-depth as well. I couldn't really show them off because I gotta go through the options in order to get there and it shows my IP or whatever, and so I didn't want to put that information out on the internet, but you'll just have to trust me. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had V Rising. Tomorrow we will likely have something else. Thank you for the luxury of your attention, and I will see you all tomorrow with something hot fresh off the indie skillet.